Welcome and good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church Online Worship. We are delighted that you've decided to join us. And for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, just so you know, on our website, we, you can download the worship bulletin, which we invite you to do so, so you can participate as we go along. Also, today we will be sharing in Holy Communion. So if you all are near bread and some wine and or grape juice or anything of the such, I invite you to get ready for that because we want to participate and share this uh, meal together today. And there are a couple announcements I want to make. And these announcements are found on the worship folder that if you've downloaded it from our website. One of which is from the Marengo Community VBS Committee, and it is with heavy hearts that they have decided to cancel VBS this year due to everything going on with the pandemic, but they look forward to coming back uh, even stronger next year. So keep watch for those dates and such. Also, and I've talked about downloading the worship folder and bread and wine for today. Also, for those of you who may not know, we are, are downloading on Wednesdays by noon, a blast from the past, a rerun of an old worship service from about five years ago. And so it is fun to see and hear some of the messages. This past Wednesday was Reverend Diane sharing the message, and you get to see some of the folks that you haven't seen for a while, and also the kids who are five years younger. So if you want to be blessed, we invite you to tune in to that on Wednesdays anytime after noon. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's all I have for now. So with that said, let us take a moment and settle our hearts and prepare them for worship. Hear these words from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Let us join together in our call to worship as we worship and praise our one true shepherd. Together. Do you need a guide? The, the Lord, Lord is, is our, our shepherd. shepherd. Do you need a doorway to new life? The, the Lord, Lord is, is our, our gate. gate. Do you need rest? The Lord restores our souls. Do you need care? The Lord is our shepherd. Come, let us worship and let us pray. Together, loving shepherd, we feel the thieves close at hand. Gather us to yourself that we might dwell secure in your ways. Deliver us from evil that we might build a community where all may dwell secure. Mark our fellowship with study, prayer, communion, and the sharing of our possessions with those in need. Amen. It is at this time when we enter into a corporate confession, and what we are doing during this time is we are acknowledging that all too often, each one of us wants to go our own way, that Jesus calls us, he calls us by name and he tells us, follow me, and we'd rather go another way. And so we come together and we confess all the ways in which we do that, but, but we do so in confidence because we know that Jesus is faithful and he promises to give us his forgiveness and to continue to call us by name. With this in mind, please join me in our prayer of confession. Together, Christ, Christ our, our shepherd, shepherd and gate. gate. We, we would, would rather, rather chart, chart our, our own course than be shepherded like sheep. We would, we would rather, rather find our, our own way than see you as the way. way. We, we would, would rather, rather be shepherds, shepherds than sheep, sheep who are vulnerable and exposed. And exposed. Forgive, Forgive us when we bleat our resistance as you guide us to higher pastures. Be our gate, our way to safe havens, where, where we, we can, can dwell, dwell with you secure. secure. Amen. Amen. Let us take a moment and make this prayer our own. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. 
the one who anoints our heads with oil, the one who feeds us while our enemies look on, the one who delivers us from evil, invites us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Hear the word of the Lord. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. And all who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you call each of us by name. We thank you that in many ways we feel like sheep that are scattered in many different places as we are not gathered together physically today, but that we are in our own homes. But you know where each and every one are, are at, and not only do you know where we are, but you are with us, you are present to us, and you desire for us to hear your message today. So no matter what we are carrying by burdens, we ask that you would lift those burdens and replace it with your yoke, that you would take away anything that hinders us from hearing your voice and your message for each and every one of us today. We pray this in your name. Amen. During the riots in Palestine in the middle 30s, a village near Haifa was condemned to collective punishment by having its sheep and cattle taken by the government. The inhabitants, however, were permitted to redeem their possessions at a fixed price. Among them was an orphan shepherd boy whose six or eight sheep and goats were all he had in the world for life and work. Somehow he obtained the money for their redemption. He went to the big enclosure where the animals were penned, offering his money to the British sergeant in charge. The NCO told him he was welcome to the requisite number of animals that he had, but ridiculed the idea that he could possibly pick out his sheep and goats from among the confiscated hundreds that were there. The little shepherd thought differently because he knew better, and giving his own call, his own sheep and goats separated from the rest of the animals and trotted out after him. Eric F.F. F. Bishop writes the story in Jesus of, Pal of Palestine, and he goes on to say, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. And he's regarding to Jesus. Today's story is about a sheep and its shepherd. And in order to understand this story, we must look at chapter 9, which wasn't part of the lectionary, but we will just kind of dip our toe in it today. But in chapter 9, we encounter a blind man who has been blind from birth, and he comes across Jesus, and Jesus heals him. Now, you can imagine what this moment is. He has been blind from birth, hasn't seen anything all his life and now he is filled with joy in the new experience of seeing and he comes back into his community his community that knew him as a blind beggar and at first they don't recognize him because he's not blind anymore but he's like I am the one I am the one that was the beggar 
And they're all wondering how this happened. How did he gain his sight? And he tells them about Jesus. And the Pharisees hear of this. And they start to question him, who has done this? And he says, Jesus has done this. And they are not pleased. Instead of rejoicing with him, they, they are angry because Jesus has healed on the Sabbath, which is against the rules of the Jewish customs. And so they go to his parents and they say, what has happened here? And because his parents are so fearful for being kicked out of the synagogue, which meant to be kicked out of the community, they said, ask our son. He was blind from birth, we will tell you that, but you need to ask him because he is of age and he can speak for himself. And so they do so, and he tells them that Jesus has healed him. And they question him and interrogate him repeatedly, just outraged of what Jesus has done missing the whole miracle before them. And so what they do is they cast this man out. They cast the blind man out of his community because they believe he is a sinner and a liar. And so Jesus hears of this and he encounters the blind man and he tells them, you know, who is the Savior? And the blind man says, I don't know. And Jesus says, well, I am he. And so the blind man worships him. And Jesus invites him into his fold. So the blind man was cast out of his community only to find a new home, a new type of belonging with Jesus. And so Jesus is now speaking to those Pharisees when we get to chapter 10. And he says, it is like this. It is like if anybody comes for the sheep, another way other than through the gate, they are thieves and they are bandits. Or some versions will say they are thieves and they are robbers. But the shepherd, the shepherd comes through the gate. And so what we need to keep in mind, and I'll touch a little bit on this now and come back on this in a minute or two, is that the thieves and robbers are described as those who come another way. They're strategic, they're intentional, and they have a motive. But the shepherd who knows his sheep comes through the gate. And not only does he come through the gate, but he comes through the gate, he calls his sheep, the sheep know his voice, And it also goes on to describe that the shepherd leads in and out. The shepherd goes before the sheep. It is an incredible image of love and care of a shepherd for its flock. And as many of you know, we are considered the sheep in the story. And the shepherd is Jesus. But It doesn't seem to land well on the people who are hearing this. So Jesus tries another way, and he says, I am the gate, and all those who come through me are saved. All the sheep who come through me are saved. And the one thing we can be confident about when we read this scripture is, one, it says that we know his voice and that he calls us by name. So each one of us, each one of you, are internally wired to hear Jesus' voice. It's kind of like the walk to Emmaus, like we talked about last week, that when our hearts burn within, they burn within, meaning they come alive, they're inspired, there's something that stirs within us when we hear truth being spoken to and over us, when we hear the voice of our shepherd our hearts burn within us. But it doesn't mean the thieves and the robbers will not stop trying to come, as they have their motives as well. But before I get to that motive, I want to talk about Jesus saying that he is the gate. It's kind of an odd image if you think about it. But when I was in Kenya for three months, I had the privilege of going to Masai Mar, which visited the the Kenyan people of Maasai, a tribe, and they are these beautiful, incredibly tall, 
people who uh, jump, and I can't remember why they jump. I should have looked this up before, but they jump, and they jump really high without using their hands. They're able to jump just with their feet, and the higher they jump, the more status they have. A incredibly beautiful people, and they have these huge holes in their ears from um, piercing them, and I think I shared this story before. They wanted to pierce my ears, and I was like, no, thank you, because it looked incredibly painful, but they shared their village with us, and we were able to go in and see that their, their homes, their huts, were no bigger and much smaller, actually, than, than my garage, my two-car garage, and their, their huts were made out of cow dung and mud, and they were encircled, so the whole village made this circle of huts. And so at night, what would happen is the shepherd would bring the sheep of all the villagers and bring the sheep and the cows and whatnot into the pasture, into the middle of the circle at night to protect them. But they had no gate. There wasn't like our electric gates or some of us have fences where we have a gate that we can latch and unlatch. There was no gate. So how were the sheep going to stay in? What the shepherds did, guess where they slept? They slept in front of the entrance. They slept in front of the entrance to ensure that none of the sheep and cows would come out and nothing would get in. And so in the morning, what would happen is they would call the animals, and the sheep especially would hear the voice of the shepherd, and they would come trotting, and the shepherd would lead them to pasture. But here's the thing about the pasture. It rains only so many months in Africa. And so it ends about February. And so by July, August, September, the shepherds have to go farther and farther with the flock in order to find pasture. And so far that they're unable to get back to their village at night. So what they had to do is they had to find a cave and put things up in front of the cave entrance in order so one sheep could go in at a time so that they could count the sheep and make sure they had them all. Or they would build an enclosure with thorns on the top so that uh, animals wouldn't be able to get through at night and harm the sheep, and guess where the shepherd slept? In front of where the sheep went in and came out. It is a beautiful image, and it is an image for each of us. Imagine Jesus sleeping on your doorstep. Imagine him at your doorstep in the morning calling your name. Imagine him making himself, settling himself at your doorstep at night, getting ready to, to put himself into position so that he can watch and protect and care for you as you sleep. That is the image that Jesus is using here. And the people that heard this scripture understood it because they were a culture of villages and shepherds. And yet, as I said earlier, the thieves and the robbers still don't try to come, and he's referring to the Pharisees who do not have good intentions. And I'm just going to read just really quickly Ezekiel 34. He ref it, it speaks to the shepherd's care of the sheep at that time. And the word of the Lord came to me, meaning the prophet Ezekiel, Mortal, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, to the shepherds, Thus says the Lord God, Ah, you shepherds of Israel who have been, who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourself with wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak, you have not healed the sick, you have not bound up the injured, you have not brought back the strayed, you have sought, not sought the lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered because they were... There was no shepherd, and they scattered, and they became food for all the wild animals. That is the leadership that he is speaking against, the leadership that does not care for their flock. And that was the Pharisees. 
And let's be clear, there are still religious leaders in our world today who do not have the right intents, who are not saying, go to Jesus, look to Jesus, but rather, look to me or do this or do that in order to be saved. But that would be wrong. And that would be what Jesus is speaking against. And I want to expand that definition of thief and robbers for us today in this Western world. I think the thief and robbers are also the voices of our society that continue to try to call our name, to woo us, to go another way, but their motive is not good. Jesus says the thieves and the robbers come to steal, kill, and destroy. Their motives are not good, but I have come that they may have life and have abundant. When I was preparing for the scripture today, I was thinking, how do I preach abundance during a pandemic? How do I preach abundance when people are losing their jobs or losing their loved ones? How do I preach abundance when we are scattered and not able to connect with our loved ones? When we're feeling such a lack. But as I studied and as I called many of you in our church family, you reminded me what abundance is. You reminded me that abundance is not the material. Of course it's not. The grass is not greener on the other side, as someone told me yesterday. But abundance in Jesus' kingdom is one of community and connection and forgiveness and reconciliation and rest. How many of you have I had the privilege of talking to over these last few weeks when we've been sheltering in our own homes and you have spoken to the abundance in your life by way of saying, I have more time now to connect with my family. I have more time now to be creative. I've heard stories of forgiveness happening during this time. I've heard stories of compassion for strangers, loving our neighbor, because we all have this common experience right now of pandemics, so this compassion is so much more at our fingertips because we have empathy for one another as we journey through this ourselves. That is what Jesus' abundance is. And this abundance is what he calls us to every day, not only during a pandemic, but even during our normal lives. So the question for each and every one of us, what part of this abundance are we going to take back into our quote-unquote normal worlds when we get through the season of the pandemic? Will you take rest? Will you take peace? Will you take control of your schedule? Will you continue to connect with your families? Or will the voices of the robbers and thieves that say, you must be busy, you must be here, you must fulfill this obligation, you must do this, will you listen to those voices? Or will you be bold and lean into the abundance that we are all experiencing in a really amazing way right now, despite the pandemic? That is what Jesus calls us to. Jesus calls you by name, and he calls you to life abundant. And so we come today to this table to not only share a meal, but with grateful hearts for knowing that we are all connected, maybe not in this place physically, but we are all together spiritually. And it says in Jesus' words, when two or more are gathered, he is there in the midst. So he is with each and every one of us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you are giving us new eyes to see what abundance looks like. That even in the midst of a pandemic, which is so scary and stressful and has caused us all to feel the lack in so many ways, in the midst of it, you are springing forth your life abundant. You are giving us new rhythms of life that incorporate peace and rest. You are giving us new connections with family members and friends. We are finding ourselves in places of gratitude where we weren't before, praising God for electronics and and being online and whatnot, praising God for what we had before by way of the freedom of coming and going and going to dinner and meeting with friends and how we miss that, but also how we get to reconnect in new ways now and be intentional in that. 
abundance overflows and this is what you offer each and every one of us because you call us by name and you you reassure us that we are wired to hear your voice so we come to this table today to share this meal together this meal of abundance that you have given through your own life and we are thankful so we pray as we go forth this week that you continue to give us eyes to see all the things that you are doing in our world, all the good things in the midst of the hard, in the midst of the difficult, and remind us that this season too will end and we will find ourselves in a new normal and let us be bold and courageous and claim our life abundant and take it with us into that new season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It is the time when, oh, we are going to pray. I was gonna go to the offering, but we are going to pray first, and of course, I've prepared a prayer. And at the end of the prayer, you will respond, Lord, hear our prayer, and then we will go into the Lord's prayer. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O Lord, that you have fed us with your word and soon at your table. Grateful for your gifts and mindful of the communion of your saints, we offer to you our prayers for all people. God of compassion, we remember before you the poor and the afflicted, the sick and the dying, prisoners and all who are lonely, the victims of war, injustice, and inhumanity, and all others who suffer from whatever their sufferings may be called. We continue to pray for those inflicted with the coronavirus or any other illness. Bring them healing. Give the doctors and nurses wisdom beyond measure to help bring healing and an end to all diseases. We especially pray for Midge Albert, Al Meisel, Sam Hunt, Russ Voorhees, and we lift up those on our hearts whom we desire for, for, for you to touch with your healing touch. O oh Lord of Providence, holding the destiny of the nations in your hand, we pray for our country. Inspire the hearts and minds of your leaders that they, together with all our nation, may first seek your kingdom and righteousness so that order, liberty, and peace may dwell with your people. O oh God, the creator, may we pray for all nations and peoples. Take away the mistrust and lack of understanding that divide your creatures. Increase in us the recognition that we are all your children. O oh, Savior God, look upon your church and its struggle upon the earth. Have mercy on its weakness. Bring to an end its unhappy divisions and scatter its fears. Look also upon the ministry of your church. Increase its courage, strengthen its faith, faith and inspire its witness to all people, even to the ends of the earth. Mm. Author of grace and God of love, send your Holy Spirit's blessing to your children here present. Keep our hearts and thoughts in Jesus Christ, Lord. Hear yeah, our prayers. prayers. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our My Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy I will be come. done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give it us this day our daily bread. bread and, and forgive us our debts as, as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to the time of our service where we take up an offering, and we want to continue to thank you for sending in your offerings. Uh, they, are, they are helpful, and they are going out into this community to help those in this community. And you will also get uh, an update about that next week if you are on our email list. If you are not... Uh, look on the worship folder and you want to be on our email list, please email Crystal and her email is in the worship folder and we will be sure to get that update to you. Um, and with that said, I will put my offering in and I will pray for our gifts. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you continue to, to bless us, not only with resources, but the family and friends around us who love us and encourage us. We thank you for the resources of uh, the technolo te 
technology in which we are able to connect with one another and have worship online, we are so grateful for all the ways in which you show up in our lives and you continue to speak abundance in our life. We pray that these gifts that we give today and throughout the week, that you would lead us to give to those in our community, to those who need it the most, and to bless others with it. And we pray that in doing so, that they would hear your good news and that they would feel life abundant. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is the time when we will share a meal of abundance. It is a time when we come together and we have the privilege of sharing a meal that points to something greater, that points to a love greater than us. So if you have not had a chance, I invite you now to get a piece of bread and some grape juice and wine so that you may participate. And when I break the bread, I invite you to do so at the same time. And when I pour the wine, I invite you to do the same. And we will partake of the bread and wine together. Please join me in our, your communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up, up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right for, for us to give thanks and praise. praise. Hear these words from Scripture from the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who was in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We come together to share in this meal, in this common belief of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We come to this meal, this meal of abundance, where we remember Christ's death, Christ's life, death, and resurrection. And we remember in this meal all the promises that God has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ, that he will never leave or forsake us, that he will be our shepherd and he will continue to be at our doorstep watching us, calling us by name and calling us in and out. We also remember in this meal that there is a meal that is to come when Jesus comes again, when there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. There will be an end to all the misery in the world and all that Jesus has proclaimed will be fulfilled and we will experience reunion with our loved ones and we will experience a feast like, like no other. And so on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. He shared it with his disciples saying, this is my body given to you. As often as you do this, as often as you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of the world. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. Christ, 
our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us eat. Let us drink. Let us take a moment of reflection. Please join me in our communion prayer. Holy One, touch us with the awe that came upon those early disciples as they beheld the signs and wonders performed in their midst by the apostles. May the gifts we offer this day 
be a remembrance of their commitment to share all things in common. In Jesus' name, amen. And please join me in our blessing. The Lord is our shepherd. We, we shall, shall not want. want. In pastures green, we rest secure. Our, our shepherd, shepherd leads us forth. By still waters, we rest secure. Our, our shepherd brings us abundant, abundant life. life. Go with the blessings of our shepherd. Go in God's peace. Amen. Amen.